Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. There are some things that are important but can be missed, even though they are easy to fix if you pay attention to them. Magnesium and homocysteine could be two of these. In this paper, the authors look for correlations between magnesium and homocysteine levels and the amount of DNA damage. Let's go through and see what they found. Magnesium is the fourth most common mineral in the body. Among the enzymes that it supports, though are those related to cell proliferation and nucleic acid stability. An adequate level of magnesium is required for efficient DNA replication and repair, both of which are essential for genomic stability. It has recently been shown that low magnesium is associated with shortened telomeres and less sleep. Low magnesium can increase the risk of many diseases. However, the role in the prevention of DNA damage has not been fully studied in humans. The hypothesis that the authors set out is to test that low magnesium, either on its own or in conjunction with high homocysteine, could induce DNA damage. There were 172 participants in the study who were healthy, aged between 35 and 65. 136 were females and 36 males. The average age for both groups was about 54. They measured the blood levels of magnesium, homocysteine, folate, which is vitamin B9, and B12. They also measured three markers of DNA damage, micronuclei, nucleoplasmic bridges, and nuclear buds. So very briefly, micronuclei are small nuclei which form around stray bits of chromosome, which are not incorporated into the main nucleus during cell division. Nucleoplasmic bridges are links between two nuclei when there should only be one nucleus, and nuclear buds are small buds which form on the nucleus containing nuclear material. All are the result of errors during cell division and are signs of genotoxic events and chromosomal instability. Measurements were taken over a six month period and the frequency of these markers found were correlated to the levels of the metabolites that they were also measuring. So let's look at the results. Magnesium levels were inversely correlated with homocysteine levels. In the discussion section, the authors did note that previously they had seen that magnesium sulfate lowered homocysteine, but did not comment further on this relationship. Magnesium levels were also positively correlated and homocysteine negatively correlated with vitamin B12. The correlations were significant. However, they are only correlations and the paper did not go into any possible mechanism of causation. These are perhaps the key graphs of the paper which show the correlations between magnesium and homocysteine with the three markers of DNA damage, micronuclei, nucleoplasmic bridges, and nuclear buds. The top three are for magnesium, which has an inverse relationship with each of them, though only micronuclei and nucleoplasmic bridges reach significance. Meanwhile, for homocysteine, there was a positive correlation with higher levels of homocysteine having significantly higher DNA damage. As measured by all three of the markers, including nuclear buds. These graphs are showing the individual contribution of magnesium and homocysteine for each of the nuclear markers. Just as in the original data, the nuclear buds did not show significant results. So my comments will be on the micronuclei and nucleoplasmic bridges only. The four bars in each graph are showing the combination of low and high magnesium with low and high homocysteine. As a note, the cutoff between high and low magnesium was 19.5 milligrams per liter, and for homocysteine was 9.0 micromoles per liter. The value for magnesium is in the middle of the normal range, and homocysteine is normally recommended to be less than 15 micromoles per liter. This bar is the high magnesium low homocysteine, and not surprisingly, it shows the best result in all cases. High magnesium and high homocysteine is next, which is a little higher than the high magnesium and low homocysteine, but not significantly so. This is the bar for low magnesium and low homocysteine. The bars over the graph show the p-values for the differences between the groups. The high magnesium was significantly better than low magnesium in both cases. 
lower homocysteine was better in all cases, but was not significant on its own. Finally, they looked at the interaction between magnesium and homocysteine and saw that in both cases it was significant. My understanding of this is that the two measures are synergistic and magnesium is more effective in conjunction with low homocysteine, but the authors did not elaborate on this. So this is showing that having the correct level of magnesium is more important than homocysteine for these nuclear damage markers, but having low homocysteine as well is best. How are the levels of magnesium and homocysteine impacting the genomic stability? And what is the effect of this? Here is the summary of the explanation in the paper. Low magnesium has been associated with higher oxidative stress, potentially by interrupting glutathione synthesis. This oxidative stress could then lead to increased DNA damage, both directly and through increased inflammation. Low magnesium could also lead to DNA replication stress, where the replication machinery does not perform correctly, leading to further DNA damage. The box at the top can be read in two ways. From the main text, the, the deficient is associated with magnesium only, and they mean higher intake of methionine leads to higher homocysteine. As well as high methionine, the correct operation of, glut of the glutathione cycle also depends on vitamins B12 and folate. The higher homocysteine also increases oxidative stress and also has been shown to impact epigenetic markers, particularly lowering levels of methylation, causing incorrectly organized chromatin. This DNA damage then leads to acceleration of aging and increased risk for the diseases of aging, such as neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and cancers. A quick look at the funding and the author's affiliations. The only funding that they show is from CORE, which is the Council of Australian University Libraries, and paid for the fees to make the paper open access, as this requires extra payment to the publishing journal. The authors are from the University of South Australia and the Genome Health Foundation. The Genome Health Foundation offers education, research and clinical services. It does not appear to offer any products related to the paper and the authors declare no conflict of interests. In the paper, the authors say that it, it can be concluded that low magnesium has an adverse impact on the cell and increases DNA damage. It also interacts with homocysteine to increase this effect. This study was observational, so I am not sure that causation was shown, though they did point to reasonable mechanisms of action. For me, the biggest takeaway was that the markers of DNA damage were significantly higher based on the level of magnesium, which is easy to supplement with, and homocysteine, which we can also control, at least in part, by ensuring adequate levels of B12 and folate. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon. <laughs>